The goals of this video are to import the data and understand the organization of the data structure and then to visualize the physical electrode locations which will help us interpret the results a few videos from now. You'll remember from the end of the previous module that we generated an image of the data mapped onto a 10 by 10 grid. Now EEG electrodes are located in three-dimensional space, not on a two-dimensional grid. So we have more options for data visualization. So what you see here is a 3D plot of the electrode locations where each dot corresponds to the physical position of an electrode. And the numbers indicate the index of each electrode in the data set. So this is the 26th electrode in the data set. Now it's not so easy to interpret this three-dimensional graph when it's projected down onto this two-dimensional screen. Here is the neck here. This is the top of the head. This would be the right ear and the front of the head is on the other side over here. Now when we uh, plot, when we create this image in MATLAB, we will be able to rotate this figure to get a better sense of the 3D distribution. Now this is how the electrodes were physically placed on the head. However, it's not so easy to visualize in 3D as you can already see. And so for that reason, people often show EEG data in a two-dimensional topographical map. So the way to interpret this is you imagine you're looking down on the top of someone's head. Here's the nose, these are the ears. And so you can see, for example, you know, here is electrode 48 in three dimensions. And here we see electrode 48 projected down onto this two-dimensional representation. All right, so now we're gonna to switch to MATLAB, explore the data and make these two plots. And of course, if you would like to work through the code on your own before watching me explain my solution, then now is your opportunity to pause the video. We start by loading in the data. So I'm gonna run this line of code. Again, if this gives you an error message, then it means that your current working directory is not where the data are located. So you can change your current working directory or put the data file somewhere where MATLAB can see it, so somewhere in MATLAB's path. Now, anytime you load in a new data file, it's useful to inspect what was imported. So we type whose to see what is contained inside that MAT file. So it's just one variable. It's a structure, it's quite big. Now we've already worked with structures in the previous uh, module. So let's have a look at this one. Now this structure contains quite a bit more information. This is the data format associated with a toolbox called EEG Lab, which is a popular toolbox for analyzing electrophysiology data. Now there's a lot of information here that we don't need to worry about. So I'm just going to direct your attention to a few fields inside this structure that we are going to use. So one of them is EEG.data, so a field called data. You can see it's a three-dimensional matrix, so it's a cube of numbers. This corresponds to 55 channels, 2,048 time points. You can see there's another uh, field in here called time, so EEG.times, which has all of the time points in milliseconds. So 2,000 time points, 346 trials or stimulus repetitions. Another field in this structure that we will be using quite a bit here is called chanlocs. So the loc stands for channel locations. And you can see that this is itself also a structure and it's an array of structures. So there's 55 of these structures. It's a structure embedded inside another structure. And of course, 55 corresponds to the number of channels. So we can have a look at this, eeg.chanlocs, and let's have a look at electrode number 30. So we can see that this is electrode number 30. It's the 30th channel index. And here is the label and uh, we're also going to be using this information. So these are the X, Y, Z coordinates of the electrode on the scalp. Okay, so with that as an introduction to the data structure, let's uh, start plotting. So we're going to plot the electrode locations first in 3D. So we are going to use the function plot3. So we need to input three different inputs corresponding to the X location, the Y axis location, and the Z axis location. So I think it's pretty straightforward what to do here. We need to, uh, first of all, concatenate all of the results, all the outputs from all the channels. We use square brackets here to concatenate them into one vector. 
and this is for x, and then we, we do it again for y, and then again for z. Okay, and then this indicates that we are going to be plotting with a black circle, and the marker face color will also be black. Now I encourage you to explore and try different options for coloring and marker type and so on, but I'm just going to make this plot as is. Okay, pretty good. We're off to a good start. Here we see the locations of all the electrodes. It looks a little bit similar to what I showed in the slides. Next, we want to draw the text labels on here. So we're going to use this function, text. Now, I have no idea how to use this function, so what do I do? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. If you don't know how to use a function, the first thing to do is type help text. And this gives you all of the help information uh, about this file. Now, I actually prefer to open up this file. So I'm going to right click and select open text. Now, all the green text, all this stuff in comments here, that's exactly what MATLAB prints out when you write help text. So when you write help and then the name of the function, MATLAB is just going to print out all the comments at the top of the code file. The reason why I often prefer looking up help information this way is that now I don't have to worry about scrolling all the way up in the command window. And you know, if I run a bunch of other code in here, then I don't have to worry about, about you know, having this help message be further up. Okay, anyway, so here's what we're looking for, text x, y, z, and string. So we need to input the x, y, z locations, and then the fourth input is going to be the string that we want to make a text of. So we have inside a for loop, so we're looping over channels, and we write eeg.chanlocs i. So we want the ith element of the, of the chanlocs structure array, and then we want the x location, and I'm sure you see where this is going, we get the y location and z, and then I think for here I will just say num to string. So this is a function that converts the number into a string, and I'm just going to be plotting the channel index here. Okay, so let's plot this and see what it looks like. Hmm, well, it did plot the numbers, however, it doesn't quite look right. Can you figure out what I did wrong? Of course you can figure it out. What I did wrong is I plotted x, z, and z. So I, I did the z twice. We need to plot y here. So let's clear this figure and run this through again. Okay, very good. Now, what you see here is that the numbers are partially overlapping with the dots here. So that makes it a little bit hard to read. For example, this electrode here, is this number 19 or 49? It's kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do is add an offset to the x coordinates. And I'm going to say, I'm going to give an offset of three. Now, three is just, you know, it's kind of an arbitrary number that I played around with a little bit and I found that this works pretty well. So you can see that provides a bit of an offset. You can also try offsetting the Y or the Z axes to see if uh, you prefer that visualization. Okay, and then finally, we'll add some labels and a title. And now one thing you notice that as I'm turning this around, MATLAB is also changing the size of the three-dimensional graph. Now what MATLAB is doing behind the scenes is trying to optimize the axis so it's displaying the most amount of information possible. However, it's also kind of you know, changing the shape of the axis. So I'm going to add axis square and that will force the axis, the, the aspect ratio of this three-dimensional axis to be the same as I rotate it around. Now, in this version of MATLAB, version 2020, I could just immediately left click and start and hold the mouse button down and move the mouse around and start dragging this thing to rotate it in 3D. If that doesn't happen for you, then you're probably working with a slightly older version of MATLAB and you can just type rotate 3D on, that's going to have the same effect. Or you can go up here and click on the little rotate button and that will also allow you to rotate the object in three dimensions. Very nice. So this shows our locations in 3D, and now we are going to make a plot in two dimensions. So here we're going to use a function called topoplotindy. This is a hacked version of the function topoplot that comes with the EEG lab toolbox. And uh, I basically just, so 
EEG lab gets all the intellectual credit for this function. I just modified the function slightly so that it doesn't rely on the rest of the toolbox. And the, the only reason for that is that you can then use this function without having to install the entire toolbox. Okay, so to use this function, topoplot uh, indie, we provide a couple of inputs. The most important two are the data that we want to show a topographical map of and then the EEG channel locations. And we have a couple of other extra optional inputs here. And uh, in particular, I'm activating, um, showing the electrode numbers. Now we don't actually have any data. We haven't yet analyzed the data or done any spectral analyses. So we just want to show an empty topo plot. So for right now, I'm just going to input all zeros. So I'm going to create a matrix of zeros. And we want to have NB Chan by one. So NB Chan is one of the fields in this EEG structure. It just tells us the number of channels we have in the data set. And the comma one here is to produce a vector. So this is a column vector of zeros where the number of zeros corresponds to all the electrodes. So just some empty temporary data that we can show. All right, and that looks like this. So now we see our two-dimensional topographical map, just like what I showed in the slides. Now, if you look here in the command window, you can see that MATLAB gave us a warning. Now there's a difference between a warning message and an error message. Warning messages are in orange, error messages are in red. Now, error messages mean like there's an emergency and something is horribly wrong with your code and you have to figure out what's going on. A warning message is MATLAB's way of telling you that something may be happening that's different from what MATLAB thinks you might be trying to do, but is not really sure. So therefore, it's giving you a warning just to give you a heads up. So this warning message is that uh, contour is not rendered for constant Z data. This is totally fine. MATLAB is just saying, hey, you, you know, you asked me to, to create a, a contour, which is this, but you didn't actually give me any data. You just gave me constant data. Now, of course, in this case, that's exactly what we want. So this is the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to start analyzing the EEG data.